It is important to remember every piece of information you are given. But it's even more important not to forget what has been learned. But even if you think you know a subject in perfect detail, all it takes is a simple bit of information to throw everything off. Take dinosaurs, for example. For many years, paleontologists thought that the Tyrannosaurus rex was simply an alpha predator. But it wasn't until roughly a decade or so ago that we learned they were scavengers, and even more recently, cannibalistic. This is one of many different examples in the scientific community. But we must not forget to adapt new perspectives to the rest of our knowledge and accept new evidence and investigate leads to gain better understanding of the truth. I challenge you to try looking at the stories, objects, and events in your life in a new light. Let's exercise this with something simple. A teddy bear. A quick history lesson about the teddy bear before I explain further. Theodore Teddy Roosevelt was bear hunting by the Mississippi and Louisiana territories in 1902 and could not find a bear wherever he went. Eventually, the hunting party he traveled with cornered and wounded a bear and presented it to Roosevelt. With one look, he blatantly refused to shoot the animal personally saying it was unsportsmanlike. The popular ending to this story is that Teddy simply ordered the bear, a young cub, to be let go. In actuality, it was an older bear, and Teddy, noticing it was wounded and tired, had the animal euthanized to end it from further suffering. Newspapers went wild with the legend until a man by the name of Morris Mictum from New York saw a cartoon of Roosevelt and the bear and suddenly had the idea to create the furry toys everyone has grown to love. This led him to create the ideal novelty and toy company to mass produce Teddy's bears. But other than that, there is actually very little known history behind the teddy bear. However, isn't it curious that a simple candy shop owner in New York and later another man in Germany named Steiff suddenly came up with the idea of these toy bears in such little time? Where did they get this idea? From a simple comic? Maybe, but perhaps there's more to this story than meets the eye. And all it takes for us to question its validity is a rumor. A simple tidbit of information that was left out. I have heard such a rumor, and the conclusion, I dare say, is much darker. During 1902, voodoo was still widely practiced in the southeastern United States and Louisiana was a definite hotspot for voodoo necromancers to come and practice their dark magic. There is a rumor of an entry in the Presidential Journal of Roosevelt seeking one of these priests in an attempt to bring life to the deceased bear once again. After performing an incantation, the bear still lay dormant and unmoving, thus convincing the president it was all a bunch of hokey, and leaving with his now supposedly spellbound bear. But upon two weeks of bringing the bear into his estate, rumors among the night workers spread that they heard what sounded like growling and even sightings of the bear rigidly roaming down the hall like a large wind-up toy. They would find claw marks on the walls and furniture, and every now and then a dead animal would turn up. Anyway, enough history. Having the president owning a possessed bear decoration 
doesn't exactly make you want to eye other teddy bears with suspicion. A voodoo curse can't apply to every bear toy ever made, right? Well, let's look at what children are told a teddy bear is supposed to do. Usually, as children, we tend to have a rather large number of fears, while still getting acquainted with this new world around us. A teddy bear is supposed to be a protector and ward off any troubling fears the child has until they are old enough to understand the world better and fend for themselves. Okay, innocent enough, but what if we speculate and now throw in the adage of a voodoo curse? Well, usually, a voodoo spell will give a desired effect, but it comes with a cost or the spell is broken and the person responsible for the broken contract must pay a price. This usually involves death, disfigurement, or even zuvembiism, otherwise known as Haitian zombieism, which is another form of slavery. So for an innocent and simple effect, such as protecting a child from everyday fears, let's presume the child must in turn care for the bear and play with it and give it love and affection. A good trade or at least in the eyes of a naive child. What if I told you that several major toy companies, including the ones previously listed, wish to profit from this idea and say, did more than a little research about binding spells to mass-produced toys in order to protect children? Let's say they kept quiet about it and hushed up what they knew about the spell, thus eliminating the source of where it came from. Let's even suggest that they still do it today. Well, if this were true, it seems that every child can have a loyal and furry voodoo guardian to play with and love as long as they continue to show it love and affection, their contract is not broken. But humanly, we age and tend to lose interest in the things we once cherished for time. But once that contract is broken, only the harshest of prices must be paid and there is no greater payment than blood. But of course, this could just be the rantings of a deranged conspiracy theorist, and the original story could very well easily be true, and I could be totally wrong. But I have one question to ask you. Where is your teddy bear right now?